Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mr. Jane and you're watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number six and this is the May 2023 wrap up. So as usual, you know the drill. We're going to do four things. We're going to do a monthly registration review. We're going to do recent EV news and launches. We're going to do a deep dive and we're also going to do EV car spotting. So this time we're going to do number three and four are kind of related together. And that is on the Mahindra group and Riva and a bunch of other stuff. So that's it. That's episode number six. Let's get to it. All right. So first up is EV registrations in India. So let me just bring up our lovely chart here. And as you can see, we've got the May 2023 numbers. Uh, these are the registrations. So this is actually from a variety of sources. Like I look down here. You know, we've got it from Vahan, Fada, and the OEMs. And as usual, <laughs> Tata Motors is at number one with 5,822. Then you've got MG Motors, and then you got m and then you got Citroen. So apparently last month and the month before, I referred to it as Renault and not Citroen. And I'll be honest with you, when it comes to Peugeot, Citroen and Renault, all three French companies are all kind of the same for me. They all kind of meld and they're one. But of course, that is not right. So this is Citroen. Uh, mainly, these are the new ones that are being bought by apparently cab aggregators. So that's the reason why you've got over 308 of them uh, registered in May. Then you've got Hyundai at 163, BYD at 138, uh, BMW is at 70. Kia 45, Volvo, Mercedes-Benz, and of course, Porsche, Audi, Jaguar have really next to nothing, which is kind of sad. As I always say this every month, the Taycan is an amazing car, and yet just not enough are being sold. So that's kind of the wrap-up for May 2023. And, you know, it's almost like the same drill every time. You know, it's Tata, MG, m and Citroen, Hyundai, BYD. It's that same order. I could print this again and again and again. And the only thing that would really change, the order would be the same, but the numbers would change, uh, which is, I guess, a testament to both Tata for doing a great job. They've got more and more cars coming, but really, it kind of Probably boring for you as an audience to kind of keep on hearing the same stuff again and again and again. Well, that's a wrap up for the registration numbers. Now let's go on to number two. All right, we are now at number two, and that is EV news. Now there wasn't a lot of EV news. The big one was, of course, the MG Comet was formally launched with the pricing. So this is kind of, you can see the Twitter handle talked about it, where they've launched it uh, around May 5th. And the price is around 8 to 10 lakhs. They've got three variants, the Pace, the Play, and the Pulse, or the Plush. Uh, it's got a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. What is interesting about this battery is actually from Tata. It's from Tata Auto Comp, which is uh, an OEM from Tata Motors where they provide products. And one of them is battery packs. And this is a prismatic pack. And the stated range is around 230 kilometers. But to kind of give you an idea of where this car fits into, I took this uh, image, obviously, from Autocar Magazine. They've got the watermark all over it. So, yes, this is Autocar Magazine in India. This is their piece. Hopefully, they don't sue me. But uh, you can kind of see where it falls. You know, you, they're comparing it against the uh, Tata Tiago EV. And then you've got the Citroen EC3, which I said it was a lot of it is being sold to cab aggregators. Uh, the Tata Tiago is here, and this is the price range for the MG Comet EV. Looks kind of cute. Uh, I saw it a couple days ago on the road. Uh, is it something I'd buy? Probably not. Honestly, if you're going to spend a little extra, I would probably get the Tiago EV. Uh, but, uh, you know, let's see where the MG Comet, if they can actually sell a lot. I hope they do, because the, the, the idea is really, I, I want to see more EVs being sold. And so the better if they sell more of them. So that's kind of the new one. That's the only real news we've got uh, for the month of May in EVs in India. So we are now at the deep dive and the EV car spotting segment. I decided to combine both of them today. So for May, we're going to talk about the deep dive and the EV car spotting in the same segment because they both relate to the same one, which is the Mahindra Group and their acquisition of Riva. So 
This is a car I recently saw on the road, maybe about three, four days ago, and it kind of sparked me to think, you know, you know, Riva was one of the original, in fact, is the original EV made in India car, uh, made by a guy named, started by a guy named Chetan Mayani, I think out of Bangalore, uh, ran the car, ran the company for many years, and then finally sold it to the Mahindra Group, and then Mahindra was supposed to do a bunch of cool stuff, and then in the end, they ended up killing the goddamn product, which is really sad. Uh, the car looks okay, but I just think it's amazing that, you know, however old this car is, probably 11, 12 years old, you know, it's an EV, so that's kind of groundbreaking. It was made in India, which is groundbreaking, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe one of the first customers for BYD was Riva. So Riva was looking for a battery component maker, and they actually reached out to BYD in China, and that's actually what got BYD going. Now you can see where BYD is today and you can kind of see where Riva is today. So it's kind of sad, but it got me thinking, you know, uh, you know, they, they had, they have all the pieces, you know, and, uh, give an example. I was recently at the uh, Taycan event. Yeah. Not the Porsche Taycan, but the T I E C O N event, as you can see here, the Taycan event. And Anisha of the Mahindra Group, who is now the managing director and CEO of the Mahindra Group, actually admitted they screwed up on their EV strategy. Uh, many people don't know, but uh, the Mahindra Group actually owns one of the most premier car studio design studios. It's called Pininfarina, and it's the same group that actually designed a lot of the early Ferraris and a lot of Maseratis, and they acquired it, and they own it. And so, you know, they, they've got the capabilities to, def, uh, you know, design really nice cars. And then they took that and they started an EV company called Pininfarina Automobili, if I believe. And that is a high-end EV car maker. And I think that they're selling about 200 units. And each one is at a, it's going for about a million euros. And I think they're sold out. So that is actually also owned by Mahindra. But their strategy in India is really lacking. You know, they bought Riva. They've got the car manufacturing capabilities. They've got distribution. They've got a lot of the pieces, not as many pieces as the Tata Group, as I mentioned last month. But Mahindra really had it. Uh, I think they went down the path of the high-end EV and they burned a lot of money with the uh, Pininfarina Automobilia. And I'm sure they're probably, you know, once bitten, twice shy with getting into EVs. But I really hope they can kind of say, you know, let's double down and really let's focus on EVs. Uh, I think they are. Of course, their first real EV out of the Mahindra Group, uh, the XUV400, is not great. Uh, but I'm really hoping that, you know, their strategy moving forward, they've, they've got a lot of new ones coming up that look great. But, of course, let's see when it actually comes out how they really are. So that's kind of car spotting and the deep dive in one segment. Like I said, Mahindra really does have the pieces. I'm hoping they can do it. Uh, let's see what they can do. Anyways, take care. That's a wrap for episode six of Electric Avenue and see you next month. Take care. Oh, no, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And